Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome all of you to uh, ESTIC 2009. I think the doors at the back are uh, now closed, and anybody should be coming through for the first session. Okay, so I'm at uh, ESTIC 2009. I have the opportunity to talk to Matthias Rommel, who's from the Fraunhofer ISE, and he is head of the group Thermal Collectors and Applications. I understand you've been working closely with the uh, development of solar thermal desalination over the last 10 years. Could you tell us a little bit about how this development is going? Yes, um, we have been working on solar thermal desalination for almost 10 years now and uh, we find it a, a very challenging uh, topic. Uh, it is um, also important because it's for the diversification of the applications of solar thermal and um, I think that solar thermal and water really uh, fit together very well because there's a basic need of energy and there's a basic need of water and maybe in many places there's even more need of water uh, than on energy in the future and so we decided to, to look for technologies uh, where these two basic technologies, solar thermal and uh, desalination, fit together very well. And we found out in the first project um, that the idea is good, <laughs> and we've, uh, but, but we also saw it is difficult actually to take uh, existing technologies for desalination and just couple them with solar. Uh, on the paper it's easy, and in reality many problems came up. And then we said, okay, we have really to look into the matter and to screen all the possible technologies uh, and look for the best suitable uh, technology for solar desalination. And uh, we ended up uh, with the process of uh, membrane distillation. Um, it is the membrane um, process, uh, but the membrane is completely different from photovoltaics and reverse osmosis membrane. So we have a membrane which um, many people know actually because in the outdoor clothing um, it is used for uh, these uh, clothing where you can sweat through but rainwater cannot penetrate and that is uh, also the same uh, membrane uh, for example from the company Gora which is well known for Goratex that we are using now for the solar desalination membrane distillation modules. So we developed them and uh, what we have reached is uh, we started with small, pro uh, with, with small systems. Mm -hmm. So what we built is a system which has six square meters of collector area plus one of our spiral wound uh, membrane distillation modules and this system is completely operated only by solar energy and we can produce about 150 liters of desalinated water per day. And uh, at places where uh, water is really a scarcity, uh, this is very valuable. And um, it is also very valuable that it is completely run by solar energy. Because in those places where we are talking about, probably solar energy is the most reliable energy and it is uh, almost every day available. Maybe you could just explain how the heat from the solar thermal collector is, is helping to drive um, the, the, the desalination process. Yes, uh, it is uh, actually an evaporation process. Uh, so we, uh, and you know every, uh, that uh, hot water is evaporating easier than cold water. And um, the operating conditions under which these processes are um, working best is at temperatures in the range of 80, 90 degrees centigrade. And the, the big um, challenge is actually, uh, you know that you have to um, use energy in order to evaporate water. But if this water, evaporated water, is condensing, you can gain the same amount of energy back so the challenge is actually to uh, produce a device where you have a high recovery rate of this energy that you have used. So what we do, if I describe this uh, system, we take the seawater um, and uh, we uh, let it uh, heat it up to a large extent from recovered energy from the condensation. And only then 10 degrees more is provided by the collector and this temperature difference of the hot and the cold stream of about 10 degrees centigrade is the driving force for the evaporation. 
And by this we are able to reach an uh, energy gain factor of about five. That means we only need one-fifth of the energy for uh, producing the water compared to not using our device but simply letting the water evaporate and get uh, the condensation energy lost. So we can reduce the energy uh, needed um, by down to 20% only from the evaporation uh, energy. And what stage of the development are we talking about? We have some demonstration or we have gone further than that? Are there commercial products available? Well, we started to do this uh, investigation and this development in the frame of European funded projects. And in these projects we have installed these systems uh, of uh, 6 square meters collector area and 150 liters daily capacity in um, which countries? Uh, we installed the first one in uh, Gran Canaria, uh, then in, Mon uh, in uh, Morocco. We installed one in uh, Jordan and we installed one in Egypt um, and uh, we um, then installed a second one in Gran Canaria. <laughs> but we also installed systems which are larger uh, with a collector area of around 100 square meters and a capacity in the range of 1,500 to 2,000 liters. And we installed one in Jordan again in Aqaba and another one at Gran Canaria. So we now have about um, uh, seven to eight uh, systems altogether uh, running. We also have uh, commercialized already some of these systems. We installed one uh, in uh, Arabic countries uh, and we are about now in another uh, European uh, project uh, to install five or four, uh, six more systems. That's the present situation. Thank you. And um, as far as getting further information on this subject, uh, how would we go about doing that? Yeah, uh, just recently we uh, found a new company. It's the company Solar Spring. So, spring from uh, water spring driven by solar. And um, this also, this company, the aim of this company is to commercialize further this uh, technology. And uh, there is a website, uh, www.solarspring.de. And there you can find more information on this uh, technology.